A warm welcome to Business Daily right here on Trust Television. I am Yusuf Akogu. Let's take our business top stories. Glad to have you back. Now we go straight to the stock market to see how the uh, markets uh, fed yesterday. The market closed in the negative territory yesterday. 0.03% it came uh, down yesterday. Of course, 378.089 million volume of shares value at 8.376 billion naira in a deals of uh, 8,106 exchange hands among investors yesterday. Quickly, we look at the gainers, the top gaining equities of four better glasses there, 9.97 percent gain yesterday to close as 51 naira, 85 combo per share. Of course, Cadbury was also there at 9.86 percent to close at 15 naira, 60 combo per share. Of course, CWG Computer, Warehouse, Computer Warehouse Group is a software development company. It's closed at 9.81 percent to close at 5 naira. 26 combo. How are on the losing side as well? We have a uh, Morrison, of course, close negative there 9.89 percent. It closed to uh, it, yeah, uh, it uh, lost there. I mean, I mean, to close at two naira 55 combo. Cord vile 7.6 percent down to close at 60 combo per share. Of course, Nascon uh, 6.83 percent to close at 56 naira and 60 combo. The top traded equities, surprisingly, no banking equity today. Owando, the new darling of investors, uh, did uh, 91.6 million volume of shares there on the day. Omatech Ventures, 30 million volume of shares. And of course, Dankote Sugar Refinery, 23.4 million volume of shares. Let's see how the market did in July. We have a very impressive uh, data performance from the month of July there. Look at the NGS all share index close at 64 or uh, above 64,000 there in the month of July. Look at the year to date gain 25.53%. Uh, if you come down to the oil and gas sector, uh, month on month, 101.40. Uh, and of course, if you look at the, uh, if you look at, I mean, 20.05 and on a year to date, 101.4, biggest gainer. Insurance sector as well, also on a year to date, 49.54% uh, as well. If you go to industrial sector, uh, that segment of the market in terms of the basis point, 2,844.36% it gained on a month to month basis, 14.1% uh, uh, and of course the year to date gain of 18.36%. Uh, uh, it come down to NGX top 50, the top 50 equities on the floor uh, on a month to month basis, 8.08% uh, and of course 40.93% year uh, to date. You go down to NGS top 30 as well, another uh, month to month basis, uh, 6. Uh, 49% and on yet year, uh, year to date 27.22 percent so the banking sector one of the uh, sector that uh, drives uh, the stock market performance on a month-to-month -month basis 3.84 percent and on a year to date 60.53 percent and of course the consumer good sector uh, on a month-to-month -month is negative 
zero point, I mean, four point five eight percent, and of course, forty four point nine seven percent. These are the highlights of how the market performed in the month of July. Quickly, we look at the African market. Of course, in Joburg, South Africa, the market is down one point six five percent. If you go down, come down to Ghana, it's positive zero point one eight percent, and of course, in Nairobi, Kenya, zero. 0.05 percent these are the highlights of the stock market performance as it went down on thursday but now we go on a very quick break when we return we're going into our discussion don't go away Welcome to Showtime. I don't even believe there's any other industry that will handle me like a movie industry. Yeah. I told you, I'm deep and soaked into movie industry. In secondary school, um, there is Fatima and Mariam Adamu. And then we we sort of took the names of the characters in that cartoon. I think entertainers themselves need to wake up and smell the coffee and say, diversification is the way to go. Yes, you can sing or you know, make great beats or, you know, act in a film, but what else can you do? I became one of the best makeup artists in Nigeria. I won um, Bama Award Best Makeup Artist. Do you think we are a lot of fool do when I talk to you, you start straight. Attention! Glad to have you back. It's still Business Daily right here on Trust Television. Now we're going into our discussion. We are looking at the Nigeria's economy and, of course, how far has the stock market done so far. It seems that the market uh, is, in a way, you know, defiling all the economic headwinds that we have seen so far. The market has remained robust in the last uh, couple of months. I have been joining me in the studio the former president of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers, uh, Mr. Olatunde Amolegbe. I hope I got that correct. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, okay, it's a pleasure having you here my pleasure so yes. let's uh, go into the discussion i'm sure you've been monitoring the market and you've seen how it is done uh, mm -hmm. it has been able to stay afloat despite all the challenges we have in the economy uh, mm -hmm. what factors what make our market that unique that mm -hmm. is not really responding to the economic challenges yeah thank you yusuf for having me and thank you for the question uh, you have to understand i mean your viewers need to understand that the stock market uh, is, is called a bar, a bar, the barometer of the economy for a reason. Mm. And the reason is that typically the prices you see uh, contains information. And those information include current information and perceived future information. Mm. So what, the, what you are seeing in the stock market that it, seen, it appears to be moving in a direction that is different from what is the current reality is, mm. is that while the, the information contained in those, in those prices is saying to you that yes, why things look good, look dim now mm. in the future. All right, with the policy we've seen, mm. the future looks much brighter than what we're seeing at the moment. So the current prices you see for stocks are, do not necessarily reflect what is happening on the spot. Mm. It also contains information as, who, as to what the market perceives is coming up in the medium to short term. To short term, indeed. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, now if you look at it, uh, like when the new government came in, 
I could recall uh, the market recorded uh, a very huge gain yes. in a single day yes. uh, trading. Uh, in positive response, uh, yes. it were on the day. But yes. now we are seeing that uh, despite the policy decision that has been taken in the yes. economy, the market has still remained afloat. Yes. So sometimes I wonder mm -hmm. what uh, factors investors mm -hmm. actually look at yes. before making their decisions. Okay. On the day of the inauguration, post the, the inauguration speech, all right, let the market to take off. I mean, they, on that day, the market, uh, or the, well, I mean, the following day, the mm. following trading day, day, the market gained Over the, high, mm. the highest one day gain in like five years. Absolutely. All right, because the market love those policies that the, 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 the president enumerated. It does not mean those policies are going to happen immediately or the positive effect, as the case may be, as such that we are going to see immediately. Mm. But like I said, the market factors in the possible impact of those policy medium to long term mm. and then price it into those stocks now. Mm. So the market is a, is, a future, is a future pricing mechanism. It is not uh, a mechanism that only determines a present mood. Mm. It also looks at what the future is. And I mean, you know, uh, it just happens that um, the stock market in Nigeria is for now limited uh, to spots in other markets where you have derivatives where you know futures and uh, futures and forwards are traded mm. you will see that those futures even speaks much more sharply mm. to what the what the market expects of the economy mm. uh, in the in the future mm. all right so I think this is the way really the uh, mm. uh, our the, viewers need to perceive it mm. what the market is expressing mm. is more of what it expects to happen medium to short term to short rather term. than what's what is in the market the moment. has a different language to the uh, language of the larger economy yeah, absolutely uh, let's look at the uh, the role of the capital markets yes. in economic growth and development mm -hmm. are we taking advantage available in the capital market, especially when it comes to infrastructure development. Are we raising enough bonds, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. taking uh, cognizance of the fact that our market is one of the robust markets, mm -hmm. especially in West Africa, so region? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I would say that we've not done anywhere near, near what we could do mm. regarding the infrastructure and the capacity of our, our, of our capital market. The truth of the matter is that most developed economies, be it in the US, be it in Europe, they utilize the tools of the capital market to develop their infrastructure significantly. Mm. And that is why uh, you will see um, uh, ratios such as GDP to market capitalization for the for US, for instance, in the region of 113%. Uh, in Europe, close to 200% in some economies. In Nigeria, GDP to market, market capitalization is 13% or thereabouts. So, it shows that we are clearly under, under, under utilizing our, our capital market. It is there in order for government to be able to raise long-term funds to finance infrastructure. Obviously, a, a infrastructure that will take you five years or 10 years to, to, to finance mm. or to build, mm. uh, you shouldn't be taking 90-day money or 360-day money to finance uh, such. Uh, absolutely. You are supposed to come to the stock market that gives you the platform to raise long-term funds, five years, 10 years, to, to raise such money because, I mean, so that you don't have a mismatch of, of funding and project. So if you come to the stock market that gives you the platform to raise five, 10-year money, you have much product, uh, you have much infrastructure with financing. Mm -hmm. But we have not been doing that. My hope is that with the new government, they will take a U-turn and be able to do those matching and, you know, we'll be able to do more. I'll, I'll give you a, a specific example mm. that we know what we need to do. We are just not doing it enough. Mm. We've so raised, it's not a matter of lack of awareness. No. We have seen government raise sukuk. They've targeted those sukuks to roads. Exactly. And we could see, every Nigerian driving all over the country could see those roads that are financed by those infrast by, 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 by the monies, uh, uh, by those soko. Exactly. We can do much more. We mm. can raise financing to build other infrastructure. We have significant, you know, uh, infrastructure deficit in power, for instance. You know, the, the, the tools of the capital market could be used to raise the necessary financing to, you know, to, to, to invest in that sector and 
make the country power in power power independent yeah, uh, indeed quite a whole lot there that can actually be achieved using uh the capital market i so, also know a couple of states things like russian states or state have actually taken that uh, advantage at some point yes to raise a, a funding mm -hmm. so let's look at the ongoing reforms in the economy quite mm -hmm. a lot has been done from subsidy removal to mm -hmm. forex and of course to setting up the tax reform committee they mm -hmm. were giving three months mm -hmm. uh uh i mean no i mean three months mm -hmm. at least to develop a mechanism mm -hmm. to you see how government revenue can actually be improved mm -hmm. so what is your take on all these policies and mm -hmm. to what extent has it impact on our capital market mm -hmm. um as i mentioned those policies are such that you know um for for better or worse they are there uh, some of them have been implemented. Mm. We can see the short-term impact of some of those politics, or form of those policies, and mm. which, to all intents and purposes, is quite it's quite painful uh, to the ordinary man on the streets. But ultimately, those policies are, are expected to to yield good fruits, you know, medium to medium to long term. Uh, it's very clear. It's almost universally universally agreed that those policies those policies mm. are such that we need to implement uh, because. It, the direction we were going was not the it was not the right direction. We couldn't we couldn't possibly sustain a situation where we were borrowing to consume. I mean, we were borrowing to pay salaries. Well, to pay salaries, we were, we were borrowing uh, to finance, you know, uh, subsidies and stuff. It was simply not uh, not sustainable. Uh, none of us would do that in our in our own uh, basic household. Mm. So something needed to change. All right. Um, and what needed to change was for us to change the direction regarding the financing. So if, if, remover, if removing subsidy means that more revenue is available for us to be able to do the things we need to do, uh, it will engender short-term pains, mm. but hopefully medium to, to long-term, you know, the country will start to see the, the benefits. Exactly, but the concern is the short-term. Yes. The short-term uh, impact on the people is really, really enormous. Absolutely. Quite a whole lot of difficulties that are people are actually going through. Or do you think the government uh, uh, should have at least put some mechanism in place mm -hmm. before taking those decisions? Yes. Um, I mean, I'm, I don't speak for the government, but... Um, Clearly, the way to have gone will have been to have put in place the right palliative before having to implement those uh, uh, those um, uh, programs. But um, uh, the, the government of the day have decided to take um, uh, you know another direction. My hope is that uh, you know uh, they will continue to do what they need to do to 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 elevate the sovereign sufferings of the people because. Um, uh, it is important that we do not cut our, our nose in order to spite our face. We mm. do not uh, inflict too much um, mm. yes, hardship mm. on the people mm. in order for them to get medium to long-term benefits. So whatever, any, whatever the government needs to do to ensure that you know, uh, it, it ameliorates the, the suffering of the people short-term mm. needs to be done. I mean, and consistent steps need to be taken in that um, in that light mm. at least until the point we start seeing the the expected you know Parts. benefits yeah okay there seems to be more attention on the federal government yes but this is uh, we are running the three types of government we have the state mm. the federal and of course the local government yeah but as it is everybody is looking up to the federal government mm -hmm. for one thing or the other but mm -hmm. when politicians are discussing politics they will tell you that politics is local mm -hmm. they go back to their respective uh, uh, locality to do uh, politics but mm -hmm. why is it that when it comes to decisions that concern the people mm -hmm. the local government is not uh, active the state government is there uh, waiting for what the federal government would do mm -hmm. uh, these are elected representatives of the people mm -hmm. don't you think these people need to be held more accountable mm -hmm. instead of paying so much attention to what is coming from the federal is the, for me that's the beauty of democracy is is for governance to to go all the way from the top to the grassroots uh, obviously nigeria is a developing democracy so we i guess we've not gotten to the point where we realize that not everything flows all the way from the top or responsibility does not lie 100 percent to the top that's why we have the structure we have mm. and um, each tier has its responsibility so and holding every tier responsible every tier responsible uh is, is the duty of every citizen all right and that will start of course with 
with transparency across board from the very top all the way to the uh, to the you know so if for instance people know what is going from from the top to the states and they know what is ultimately going to the local governments and all of that then it is easier to ask questions mm -hmm. uh, you we, we just spoke about um, the issue of uh, of of of, of biolatives. Uh, the federal government has said, okay, look, we've done this, 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 this uh, regarding, you know, palliatives for different states. Mm. Uh, the question is, are people asking the people in charge of the states that, okay, look, what you've got from the top, what have you done with it? Exactly. And if you at the state level have said, okay, look, this is what we've done at the local government level, are people also asking the local government, the people in charge of the local governments that, you got this from the state. We are aware it's public information. There's transparency. Mm. Can you also show us what it is that you've done with it? Mm. That way, governance, to my uh, mind, will become more effective. Uh, absolutely interesting. There. Uh, mm. uh, we are uh, almost running out of time, but mm -hmm. let's look at the president hundred days in office. Mm -hmm. uh, well, from everything that you have seen so far, mm -hmm. I don't know if your hope has been renewed. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not a politician, but um, I, I, I feel that, you know, and I will, I will try and ask, answer this as a capital market operator. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, as a corporate market operator, if I listen to what the market is saying, uh, the market seems to be, to, to be happy with what it is hearing. Maybe not what it is seeing in terms of action, but mm. it, is, it is obviously happy with what it is hearing. The mm. market, I, I believe the, president, the, the market... Um, uh, the ASI, the NGX ASI was, was it three or four percent up before the market took, uh, the, board, the, president, the president, president took, took office. Took yes. We are now talking of it moving from four percent to close to 25 percent. Exactly. So clearly, as at the 1st of August. So clearly the market likes what it is hearing. Mm. All right. Now, uh, saying is one thing, doing is another thing. Mm. And my, our hope is that, you know, uh, with time, you know, uh, more of those things, more of, more of those stated policies will put in action. Mm -hmm. Actual uh, activities will back up those um, uh, 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 those policies. stated policies. Mm -hmm. You know, but as a market operator, I can only listen to the market, and it appears that the the market is comfortable with what is there. Mm, and the market is inching closer. The Oshia index is inching closer to seventy thousand basis points. We're actually Absolutely. changing the Johannesburg stock exchange uh -huh. at the moment. But let's look at. Uh, even though we understand that the market is in, uh, is happy with what is happening, yeah. there is also some concern. There are mm -hmm. some companies listed on the stock exchange, some mm -hmm. like Glasgow Smith Clients, for yeah. example. Mm -hmm. They've given a notice that mm -hmm. they are leaving Nigeria after 51 years of operation. Yeah. PZ Cousins is mm -hmm. also there. They are planning to delist their unit and offer uh, uh, their shares to minority shareholders mm -hmm. as well. So this should be a concern as well mm -hmm. to market operators like yourself. Anytime any, listed, any, anytime any listed company is seeking to pull out from the market, uh, it is always clearly a, 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 um, a cause for concern because, of course, we are talking of a reduction in the market capitalization and obviously a reduction in the, in the, in the instruments that is available for market operators to trade on. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, we must understand that, you know, there are various reasons why companies will choose to exit the market. Uh, some of those reasons will be will have to do with the country and the policy on the or the business environment within the country they are operating. That's right. Some of those reasons will have to do with the sp specific strategy of the company itself. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, uh, GlaxoSmith had said that the reason why they are looking to pull out from Nigeria is more of a, a, a global strategy thing. Obviously, you know, GlaxoSmith is, is is a global. Pharmaceutical Good giant. Yes, and they mm -hmm. also complain about mm -hmm. the difficulty in accessing forests in Nigeria. Absolutely, which is a which is a legitimate uh, concern, concern mm -hmm. clearly. Uh, you know, but you know, beyond that, there will be other you know uh, you know global reasons why they will decide to ultimately pull t pull the trigger and leave. Uh, I must point out that they are they are not only actually pulling out, pulling out of Nigeria; they are pulling out from. Uh, quite a handful of other 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 countries within uh, the West emerging Africa, emerging Africa. markets, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, so it's 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 more you know um, more out of their own company strategy, but you know we we cannot uh, we cannot downplay 
uh, the impact of um, ease of doing business in the decision of some of these global corporates mm -hmm. in deciding whether to stay in your country or not. So issues such as um, uh, accessing FX, issues such as multiple transactions, mm -hmm. issues such as um, you know, avail availability of good infrastructures needs to be, uh, not, needs to be addressed such that you know, uh, we can remove concerns as about ability to do business from the table. Mm. So even if a company now ultimately decides they want to they want to leave, it will not be because of our own oh, uh, yeah. macro, macroeconomic issues. Policies. But Absolutely. when you have a company that has spent 51 years in your country yes. trying to pull out, what message is that sending to prospective investors? Obviously, you know, it's, it, it, there's no way we can paint it as a positive, um, as a positive, uh, you know, uh, message clearly. Mm. Uh, yeah, but um, I've said that you know it, it, the message is sent. We just hope that our policy, our policy, um, our policy makers hear those messages. They take them to heart and try to address those issues mm. that could make the, that could have made that company arrive at that uh, decision, at that decision, and hope that you know they cor they, they, they correct um, the situation such that. Or that such companies do not arrive at, at, at such a decision, you know, going oh, forward. Oh, okay, we hope that uh, this uh, kind of uh, 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 decisions, I mean, mm. some companies quoted on the stock exchange will not continue along this line. Yes. I mean, following uh, Glasgow Smith Klein and, of course, PZ Cousins. I must thank you, uh, Mr. Olatunde Amolegbe. I hope I get that correct you again. You the former you. president, Shattered Institute of Stockbrokers. Mm. I must thank you for your time on Business Daily. Mm -hmm. Hope when we call on you again, you oblige us. Thanks for having me, Yusuf. Yeah, thank uh, you. it's, thank been, it's been nice being here. Thank you so much for appreciating. Right. Thank you. Uh, with that is a wrap on the show today. We'll be back on Monday. I am Yusuf Akogun.